This is my master's project on Springbot, a robot that uses wheels and the passive compliance of springs to vertically climb rainforest trees. So as a background to the project, the problem is that 2% of the world's rainforests are destroyed annually for reasons including agriculture expansion. And within the rainforest, there are non-timber forest resources, so for example, fruits and nuts, and they have high economic and pharmaceutical value. So commercialization of those uh, resources can then incentivize governments to protect the rainforest that they're situated in uh, from, the deforest from the deforestation. The problem here is that accessing those resources is difficult because they're in the remote upper canopy. And so for this application, a tree climbing robot is needed. So I carried out a lit review into the different types of climbing robots that exist and realized that none of them were suitable for this specific application that I mentioned. So the research question that I came up with was, can a power efficient, robust, portable, economically sustainable and situated robot be developed to climb irregular rainforest trees to traverse the upper canopy in search of non-timber forest resources? And for completeness, I've added the definition of situated or situated robot. So for my project, this is the process that I used, the embodied robot design process. So I started by identifying criteria and then I took an initial concept to a final validated prototype, robot prototype, uh, using the methods in the circle there. So on the top right, you can see an image of a low fidelity prototype that I made and then <clears throat> on the top left, you can see a test setup that I used, or an early test setup that I used. And then the bottom two images show me using CAD to prototype and develop the tail. So these are the criteria that I came up with. So on the left shows the measures of success. So these were the criteria that the robot, the final robot, had to achieve to be deemed successful. And then on the right are the situated design criteria. So those are the criteria that, uh, as a result of the robot's context of use. So I broke that down into the natural environment that it would be within and then also the social, due to the social and economic environment it would be in. So the first outcome of the project was the fully working robot prototype that you can see on the right. So it has a novel compliant wheeled gripper mechanism and a spring-loaded tail and it uses those to vertically roll up trees. So it's comprised of two arms and each of them has three links and the links are connected by spring-loaded joints and this gives the robot um, the ability to passively comply to the surface it's climbing. And there are two actuated wheels covered in sandpaper and three passive wheels, so one on the tail and two on the distal links. And then in total there are 18 extension springs and these allow the static gripping without power consumption. So overall, uh, the robot weighs 645 grams and can roll up trees at a maximum speed of 6.61 centimeters per second. So the second outcome of the project that was a lower priority feature that was developed separately to the climbing function was this antagonistic tendon mechanism. So each of the arms has two tendons and the first pair closes the arms, as you can see, and then the second pair of tendons um, opens them. And the second outcome of the, the project was the experimental results that were gathered uh, as a result of testing the capability of the final robot. So this large table here shows uh, me evaluating which of the situated design criteria that I showed you earlier uh, had been met. And now I'm going to go on to show you the eight experiments that I carried out to test whether the eight measures of success criteria had been met. So the first experiment was for a measure of success one, which was climbing distance. And the question was, can the robot vertically climb a minimum distance of one meter? So I used a real tree, uh, roughly 15 centimeters diameter, covered it in sandpaper. And as you can see in the top video, um, it did achieve this measure of success of climbing one meter. And for this uh, experiment, I also used the foam cylinder um, to get the probability of success of climbing. So I carried out 20 attempts at a 25 centimeter climb on the foam cylinder on the, cylinder on the bottom right here. And I got the value of 95% uh, probability of climbing success. So the one failure from that experiment was due to the wires coming undone in the electronics. So overall, it was a pretty 
um, reliable at climbing. And the second experiment was for MOS2, which was climbing speed. And the question was, can the robot climb at a minimum speed of four centimeters per second? And it's worth noting that um, these values for the MOS measures of success were uh, inspired by uh, values that I came across in the lit review. So for this one, as you can see in the video, I used a similar test setup as before, and I uh, timed the climb. So with a four centimeters per second speed, um, it needed to do the 25 centimeter climb in 6.25 seconds. So it did achieve this measure of success. And then I, after that, ramped the motors up to their maximum rotational speeds to uh, determine, determine the maximum speed that the robot could climb. So that came out to be 6.61 centimeters per second. And then experiment three for MOS3 was power consumption. So the question here was, can the robot climb with a maximum instantaneous power consumption of four watts? So I used one multimeter to measure the voltage and another one to measure the current. And as you can see in the bottom video, um, I looked at the values while the robot was climbing to determine the average uh, of, those, of the voltage and the current. So for this, the averages were 3.958 volts and 336 um, milliamperes. So multiplying that together, it gave me 1.33 watts. So after this, I did some research to sort of interpret these, uh, this result. Well, first of all, it did um, achieve the measure of success. It was lower than the 4 watts. So yeah, I did some research to interpret this result. And using a 2,200 milliamp uh, hour LiPo battery, uh, which had a 12.6 voltage, and therefore a 27.72 watt uh, output power. Dividing that 27.72 watts by my 1.33, that meant that the robot could be powered by that LiPo battery for 20.8 hours, which, um, comparing this with the application that the robot would be within, seemed like a good result to me. And on to experiment four for MOS4, um, this was for overcoming obstacles. So the question was, can the robot overcome obstacles during climbing? So I categorized these in, this one into two types. So on the left, um, it was to see whether the robot could roll over bumps. So I put a slightly smaller uh, cylinder on top of the climbing cylinder and, oops, and attempted a climb. And as you can see, it did roll over the bump eventually, so that was a success. And I tried it two other times. Uh, one time it failed and one time it passed, so two out of three success. So I uh, deemed that as a success overall. And then on the right, um, this was to test whether the robot could maneuver around obstacles, so I tried to uh, make it turn. So I put one motor at a quicker speed than the other one. and. As you can see here, I had to stop it early because I didn't want to damage the robot, but it wasn't able to um, do the turn. So from this, I learned that the robot, the mechanism that the robot used to move was very much dependent on alignment and symmetry. So in the future, if I did want it to be able to maneuver around obstacles, it would have to move orthogonally. So I think I would need to add a horizontal drivetrain with the two vertical drivetrains that I have right now. Um, yeah. So it didn't fully achieve that measure of success. So the next experiment was experiment five for MOS5. And the question here was, can the robot climb a variety of diameters with a range of 10 centimeters? So in the top left video, you've seen it climb uh, the 15 centimeter diameter real tree covered in sandpaper. And then the bottom left shows it uh, climbing the 20 centimeters diameter. And then on the right here, uh, I tried out the climbing on a 25 centimeter diameter real tree covered in sandpaper and it didn't achieve this climb. So um, it was hard to tell with this whether it was due to the irregularities of the real tree, um, because at the wide angle, it seemed like the servo motors were coming into contact with the tree and causing friction. So with a little bit more time, I would have liked to make a foam cylinder at that 25 centimeter diameter and see whether it would be able to climb that diameter on a smooth surface. Um, yeah. So experiment six was for transitioning from trunk to branch, and that one 
couldn't be tested with the robot's mechanism. So experiment seven was for climbing slope. So the question was, can the robot climb slopes from 45 degrees to 180 degrees being on the underside and overside? So this left video shows it climbing on the underside side at 180, which it achieved, and then overside um, on 45 degrees. So it could achieve all those angles for this measure of success. And then lastly, experiment eight was climbing with a payload. So can, can the robot climb with a minimum payload capacity of one kilogram? So on the top left, left photo, you can see that I tried with a 500 gram rice payload and that was too heavy. Um, on the bottom left, it shows it climbing with, or trying to climb with a 236 gram glue bottle, and that was too heavy and I had to stop it early because I didn't want to damage the robot. Um, and then to see if it could climb with any sort of payload, I tried this 20 gram glue bottle on, on the right video, uh, so it achieved that one. Um, so yeah, in the future I'd like to maybe topology optimize the robot so that it could reduce the weight overall and be able to take... Uh, a payload capacity or a larger payload capacity. So to conclude, I've developed a semi-situated robot. So to be fully situated, I would need to develop some of the areas of it so that it could tick uh, all the criteria that I mentioned earlier. So some of these design developments that I've thought about was uh, our topology optimization, like I mentioned earlier, to reduce the weight of the robot to allow a larger payload capacity and then also adding the horizontal drivetrain so that it could move orthogonally and potentially maneuver around obstacles. And then finally, some of the insights that I gained from this project were to do with the contact interaction forces within climbing robots in general and the need for real-time responses to their effects during climbing. And then also form and force closure, which played a large uh, a main part in my early prototyping when I was trying to get the robot to statically grasp the tree first. And then also the trade-off between adhesion and uh, adhesion needed for grasping, so providing enough normal forces to grasp the tree, and then uh, secondly overcoming that friction to be able to actually roll up the tree and climb. So thank you, thanks for listening. And here are some of the references that I've uh, noted in the earlier slides.